Um, it gives us great pleasure to be here in this wonderful space, actually, absolutely wonderful room. And although I'm mic'd up, which is because of online streaming, um, it's amazing how this, the design of this, that the, the voice, the, the noise spreads brilliantly around the space. Um, we're going to be, uh, we've got a very exciting agenda uh, today. I think, is the agenda, is that, is that the next slide? Is it me that does it? Yeah, there's the agenda. Um, so we've got a full day. Uh, we've got uh, lunch and drinks later, and I'm hoping that you'll be part of that as well. And we've got some wonderful opportunities and workshops as we go through the day. Okay, so if I click into my, my beginning presentation, Okay, lovely stuff. That's great. So I've got a, I've got a lovely script here. So my name is Damien Chapman, um, and I'm an assistant dean here in the faculty of ECE, Engineering, Computing, and the Built Environment, um, here at Kingston. Um, I'm joined by Vesna Brujic Okretic, who's a professor um, and head of school uh, for computing and mathematics, um, and we're going to be introducing the events today as we move forwards. Um, our events today are part of the annual Systemic Design Symposium relating systems thinking and design as a foundation for the emergence of research and inquiry. And I think that's a really interesting place for me to start. Um, I'm interested to explore, and I've got some, some, some useful notes here on screen, but I'm really interested to explore constructionist methodology. And that methodology, that constructionist approach, informs the development of circularity, something I'm going to develop in this few minutes as we go forwards, um, through a thinking and learning approach. And I gain that thinking, that learning, that space through conversation and the process of conversation. And I want to elaborate a little bit on this idea of conversation. I find it fascinating how conversations emerge between people and construct organizations. We are conversations as organizations. We are conversations that are not just between people, but between the materials we use, the environments within which we operate, work, communicate. And so conversations are an emergent space of organizations, institutions. That means that we construct them, deconstruct them, and reconstruct them in the moment. And I think that's what we're doing today. We're building an emergent space where well, we can co-construct, co-collaborate to develop new meaning and potentially new purpose. And that's where I'm hoping to go. Um, I'm interested in meaning making and I find meaning making personally through drawing and mark making as well as creative conversation. And I have a history of this. Um, as a designer, my practice explores a prototyping approach where I look at how I can build, evaluate, gain feedback to learn further and make next steps. I find that process, that cycle of learning, feedback, learning, feedback, crucial for the way I think and work. For me, the interpretation of design, for me, meaning a visual, an iterative, and a user-centered approach to inform innovation and developing pur purposeful language, um, I find that central to the methods that I potentially use, I, I use. So constructionism, and I'm going to I'm going to go to the screen and look a little bit at some of these these kind of quite key elements. Um, it's understood as learning through interconnected patterns in a layering process, which integrates mental mapping through thinking, and that combined with engagement in our social systems of interaction, a kind of living environment, a constructing of meaning. The image here on screen is actually from my dad, David Chapman, an artist. And I was fascinated as, as a younger man, w working with my father, going for walks and making sense of the landscape and ideas. And one of the powerful elements that I wanted to bring to the beginning of this talk is that very often what we see is part of the experience of meaning making. And one of the most powerful things I learned from my dad was that you don't just look at the word and the written and the given but the engaging the experience as part and the crucial part of meaning making, the experience, not just the obvious. Very, very often that might be tacit rather than explicit information. 
And I think the pattern forming and the paths that um, my dad used were so fascinating in the way that he constructed meaning. So we would walk on found pathways in the landscape, a kind of acting to know, a phrase that a friend and colleague Paul Pangaro was talking about, creating maybe proxy goals so that we could learn in that cycle of feedback, learning, review, evaluate feedback as we built the relationship between father and son, but looking and learning about the landscape. Now, if I apply this finding process, this looking at the cycle of learning to a space where I maybe consider going from an abstract idea to a concrete, we have this wonderful phrase liminal or liminal space, which I find intriguing. In some ways it's jumping off into the unknown but being aware of how we can construct and build. And from this, I was quite interested in the place of articu articulated or coded insights. I suppose in my creative practice, I explore how we might understand the idea and how we might unpack idea in experience and making and doing. And from that, I build that through, as I said, conversation. Here, I have this idea which might be cyclical, it might be an object, it might be the experience that then is unpacked in conversational interpretation. Here we have the circularity of implicit and explicit meaning. And here on the right hind side of the uh, illustration, I've got the dynamic thresholds. So I don't see these as walls between these elements. I see these as thresholds, spaces that you walk into to develop, grow, learn, reconsider, evaluate the experience. This is an image actually of the staircase um, of my dad's house. And I love this idea that you walk into or walk out of a space and that that space of walking into or out of is part of a transformation place. That reminds me of the zero space that Ranulph Glanville spoke about um, using a kind of Mayan principle that when you would go to a temple, as you walked over the very large thresholds, you were in a place of transformation. And I often think that learning is this remarkable and innovative place of transformation. So I think it's quite powerful when you take that into a visual language. Here we have Dean Barnland's uh, fascinating diagram from the 1970s. And isn't that incredible? 1970s. But what is interesting about that cyclical process is how within that place of conversation and learning, you've got the person, the decoding, the encoding. You have the public cues, the private cues, the non-verbal behavioral cues, but you also have the verbal behavior cues and the message. It's complex, it's exciting. I also find this absolutely fascinating from uh, Bruce Archer. I don't know if you've heard of Bruce Archer, wonderful professor uh, of design, uh, worked at the Royal College of Art. Um, but what was fascinating about this particular piece um, that Bruce Archer developed was that he looked at rather than humanities and science being two, two places within which we, we learn and we have as academic domains, the design is actually that third space, that place of modeling. And it's interesting how this, this model transforms this idea of humanities, science and design. And I would argue that this is part of a space of collaboration, the place of how all of these build together and are empowering of each other. So with its crashing waves, this drawing again from my dad, inspires conversations to reflect on Glanville's cybernetic musing. Um, Glanville said, um, design cybernetics writing and actually building on Pask's work. He points to what many of us realize on different occasions that we behave in different ways as if we were sometimes different people. So for many of us, talking and listening require the assumption of different personae. We might think of the talker leading, the listener following. When I switch from talking to listening, Glanville wrote, I switch not only what I'm doing, but aspects of who I am, the role I'm taking. We recognize our ability to assume different persona with these expressions. Wearing a cybernetician's hat, he writes, the designer sketching or doodling switches between roles, persona, marker, and viewer. Or to be patentically precise, he writes, the drawer who then listens before drawing again, and the listener who then draws before listening again, a visual equivalent of talking and listening. 
So my making sense has been explored through applying a process of prototyping. I'm making and a visualization approach, shaping language, prototyping forms of embodied conversation and exploring an emergent practice. And from this, I build further into our debates today. So thank you. I'd like to welcome Lesna now to give her part. Thank you. Thank you, Damien. Well, um, welcome to this uh, fascinating event uh, from both Damien and myself. And I, we said between ourselves that our talks are yin and yang of what we're trying to achieve. This fantastically nice and uh, visual and rich uh, presentation that really is inspirational will be followed now by the exact science approach to presentations where, you know, I will try to highlight. <laughs> by uh, a, a pretty much kind of dry science approach type of thing. And this is the point of this event. We try to marry these two approaches, which we have done in our own right uh, for the last few years, and really open up this kind of space for collaboration and for tackling some very, very difficult, almost unsolvable problems in the world and put it all in the context of cyber uh, security and digital innovation. Now, moving on to my first slide, I will say, like Damien did, I am Vesna Brugicocratic. I'm head of professor in computer science, head of school of computer science and uh, mathematics. And I am not an artist, which you can notice from my, uh, from my presentation, uh, but so much the better, we need all aspects to be included. I'm a proud director of our um, uh, Academic Center of Excellence in Cybersecurity Education, which is recognized by um, the National Cybersecurity Center, which is an educational arm or GCHQ uh, in 2021 with a silver award. So we have a mission, we have a, a, a status that we can use uh, regionally and uh, beyond the, the region. The, what is it that we do? We here uh, at Kingston, we have a new town house strategy, and that is a strategy that is, uh, gives us a lot of wings to fly. That's a strategy that places cybersecurity and digital challenges at its epicenter. And we really want to make most of it. We're just at the beginning of this process. If we would like you, especially our new students, to, to, to come with us on this journey because it's going to be fascinating and we're going to be doing some really, really fantastic things. Cyber Center is strategically established to be a place to go to, not just regionally, but also nationally. And an all-embracing hub is being um, created to foster the interdisciplinary approaches uh, um, and that will be launched sometime soon. Very interestingly, we combine expertise in cybersecurity that we are very strong in with artificial intelligence, with search in artificial intelligence, which we also have a very big strength in to address current uh, challenges. What we have here, the format of RSD12 really promotes what we're trying to do, which is combining uh, these different approaches to tackle some very difficult problems, which are unorthodox and not usual and very, very big. And the whole world is, if you like, uh, uh, immersed in that and uh, um, sort of trying to, to, to make, a, make a move on solving those problems. So the interactive talks are the talks that you're going to be hearing today from our 
prominent uh, experts. One is on designing for emergence and communication or miscommunication. Another one is um, about the potential of author ethnography to drive technological innovation. Um, the next one is this kind of uh, marriage between cybersecurity and AI, the potential of it. Uh, this is honeypots in AI for proactive uh, cybersecurity. And then the last one is the stopping games for modeling unethical hacking roles. There is another big area that we are very strong on the games. And now with a combination in a combination with uh, with cybersecurity, we could make uh, some uh, really interesting forays into uh, new paradigms of how games are being made and how games are being used. We try to, to, to tackle here cyber as a wicked challenge. We spent some time uh, looking at the correlations between the wicked challenges as they're known in social sciences and have been known for a long time uh, to kind of uh, uh, see whether cybersecurity problems that we are looking at do qualify as wicked problems, and they do. This will be part of our discussions. This will be part of interactive talks, and especially at the end of the uh, the presentation, where we will have a big panel and uh, and uh, uh, sort of defining these big challenges uh, that will come to the fore. Um, it is associated the, these specific. Uh, challenges will be associated with cyber and digital sort of domain, combining and juxtaposing, and this is the point of the whole of the day today, uh, design thinking and systems thinking with state-of-the-art computing concepts that embrace a lot of novel concepts in computing, but dominantly, in this case, artificial intelligence. And we will try to do that. The, the kind of di diagram on the right there uh, is one of the many diagrams that show, uh, that gives us some kind of visual representation of what a wicked challenge is, or uh, whether a, a problem qualifies as a, as a wicked challenge or not, because it's very difficult to define. And, and I thought that one was, uh, you know, it, it does actually give you some pointers that would be uh, of interest and you could understand what we are talking about. Now, um, this event uh, follows a few very successful events that we have been running in the faculty and in the university uh, recently, very recently in the last month. Uh, one of them was a knowledge transfer, knowledge exchange uh, uh, event that our faculty organized, which was immensely popular and very, very good. And I created a little bit of a, like a, a some snapshots from these events to actually project on the audiences the atmosphere, the buzz from those events, and also some pictures from the induction day where you started your courses, which was also uh, just a few weeks ago. And uh, that will be played in here now. You can recognize some faces here. Into knowledge exchange event. Happy staff, you can see that. These are mathematicians, cyberistas, and this is you. Well, thank you very much. We can now start with our very, very exciting programs. Just one last thing that I would like to say. We are very, very fortunate and very proud that we have here Ben Sweeting and Dalmini Ferreira with us, who will be running one of the in-situ workshops 
there are two workshops, as you have seen in the in, in the program. One will be run uh, by Christina Vakta uh, externally, but facilitated by Daryl Green Greenfield here, and another one uh, by Ben Sweeting and Dulmini, and that would be uh, a, a very good, if you like, uh, uh, starting point to get us going on this way of thinking, which is new to us. Uh, as well as to, to, to our students, because we're coming from different approaches, different theories, different methods to the same problem. That's the, that's the point. So welcome, Ben. Welcome, Dulmini. Thank you very much for coming. And for Ben, I mean, the workshop's going to be on the fifth floor. So we have 10 students that they're going to take with them, or 10 people that they can take with them. So could I have 10 hands to go to the fifth floor for the workshop, please? So 10 people, one, two, three, four, five, another five, please, another five hands, six, seven, eight, yeah, seven, eight, and two more, two more, nine, one more, one more, 10, there we go, perfect, so that's 10.